All right, let's do some advanced scanning with Nmap. Now, of all of the tools that you learn how to use, Nmap and Netcat are probably the two where you actually have to know the syntax, besides some of just the built-in uh, Windows and Linux commands. But of all the third-party tools, Nmap and Netcat are probably the two where you actually need to know the commands. So what we're going to do is we're going to log into Kali, and we're going to start a packet capture in Wireshark, and we're going to try different commands, and we'll look in Wireshark at what these commands produce. So this first command, we're going to nmap, and um, nmap is case sensitive. So we're going to say uh, tack small s cap p, which is basically a ping sweep. So we're going to ping sweep 192.168.75.whatever. We're basically looking for live hosts on this 75 subnet. Then we're going to nmap just the subnet, and instead of doing a uh, dot um, star, we're saying slash 24, which effectively turns out to be the same thing. Um, we're setting a 24-bit mask because this is with a default mask, a class C subnet. We're effectively scanning uh, this whole subnet, but instead of doing a ping sweep, we're scanning, we're doing the default scan, which if you're in privileged mode is a SYN scan for the thousand most popular ports. If you are an unprivileged user, it's a full TCP connect scan. And then we're going to do a SYN scan, which is basically the same thing. And then we're going to do a uh, SYN scan where we are interrogating the um, versions of the services behind those ports, try to find out about them. We're doing a TCP connect scan, and this TAC3T, uh, T, CAP T3, uh, means that uh, we're going at, at sort of a medium speed, um, not too fast, not too slow. Um, which is, by the way, the default. Um, we'll do a Christmas scan here where we will raise the urgent fin and push flags of a TCP scan. And um, so this uh, full connect is just to one machine. This one uh, is, now this is interesting because we are going to one machine, but with a 24-bit mask, we're actually going to do the whole subnet. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this off and just do a Christmas scan on one and rather than try the whole subnet. Because you can actually give a host um, even the name and slash the mask, and base, based on the IP address it finds, it'll apply that mask and do that range. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the firewall of that host, run the Christmas scan again, and compare what that looks like. Then we're going to turn off the firewall again, and we're going to uh, do a a scan that does a bunch of things here at a little faster speed. Um, we're going to scan two machines, 16 and 8, and with this one we're going to do several things including trying to fingerprint the operating system, we're going to try to um, uh, trace route to them, we're going to try to interrogate the, the hosts, uh, uh, the rather their ports and their services, and maybe do a little vulnerability scanning in verbose mode, that's what the TACV is. Then we're going to do a UDP scan at insanely high speed, which is unstable, against Metasploitable. And since we're not specifying particular ports, uh, it's going to do um, basically uh, all of the ports, the common ports. Then we're going to do a fast scan, which is just the 100, not 1,000 uh, favorite ports. Then we're going to do a fragment scan, where we're um, uh, just basically uh, specifying uh, fragments with an MTU of only 8 bytes, which sometimes will get us past a firewall or get us past an intrusion detection. And we'll probably do one or two other scans while we're at it. So um, these are some of the things we're going to do. So let's start. I'm just going to put this over here just kind of as a reminder to us so that we can refer to it every now and then when we need to. In fact, we're just going to make sure I know that the uh, know what the switches are here. So first of all, we're just going to type nmap, press enter, and when you do that, you scroll back up, you can see all of the switches that you can put in. And so with nmap right here, um, the basic syntax is nmap and then the target. And the target could be like a resolvable name, a name slash a mask, a particular host, 
a host with a range. So like in this case, it's 10.0.0.255. Uh, uh, oh no, excuse me. It's 10.0.0 to 255, 1 to 254. Ooh, that's a long scan. So it'll start with 10.0.0.1 and go to 10.0.0 all the way up to 254. Then it'll go 10.0.1.1 to 10.0.1.254, 10.0.2, 10.0.3 up to 10.0.255. That is a big long scan. Um, and then we can see that there are different exam or different choices here. You can choose the scan type. The scan types um, typically start with a small s and then additional options. Now, I have to tell you that Nmap is actually quite forgiving. Um, so long as uh, you don't like in intersperse things improperly, you can put the target before the scan types and the options. You can mix them around. So it's actually pretty um, loose in, in terms of the syntax. So looking at uh, some of these choices here, we could um, scan using attack small i cap L and just have a list of hosts of ne and networks, and it would just read off the list. Um, you could uh, uh, also um, do a attack small s cap L, so S L, not I L, and what this means, it would not actually do the scan, it would just list what it's going to scan. Uh, uh, S N is a ping scan, which is the same as the uh, S cap P, which I had over here. Um, uh, to cap P small n, do not do not ping or actually nmap does not do a ping sweep by default. It does an ARP scan to see who's live. Uh, it this one means assume that they're live and just start port scanning. Uh, then you can um, set different kinds of uh, uh, scans like TCP SYNAC or UDP or whatever. Uh, you can um, send these to whatever ports. Uh, going down farther, you can even choose IP protocol. Uh, you can specify DNS servers. Um, here are the scan techniques. The small s cap s is a SYN scan as opposed to, to a full TCP connect, as opposed to an ACK scan, where we send um, TCP packets with the ACK flag raised. And so that um, often firewalls and IDSs will just think, oh, it's in the middle of a conversation and not notice it. Uh, we can do a null scan with no flags raised, which is totally illegal. In TCP, you got to have something raised, at least the ACK flag. We could do a fin flag where we just have the, the fin flag raised. We could do the Christmas scan, like I said, which is the fin push and urgent flags. Some people mistakenly think that it's all flags, but it's not. It's fin push and urgent. Um, we could have scan flags and then just pick custom whatever we like. We could do a zombie idle scan where you're basically um, uh, scanning through something else. And we could uh, do an FTP bounce scan where we're basically asking one FTP server to um, create a session with another FTP server, although pretty much all FTP servers uh, no longer do that for security reasons. We can then uh, tack small p and then just say the port, like small p22, meaning just scan port 22, or small p, and notice the dash in front, uh, 1 to 65535, meaning scan them all, or small p u colon 53, meaning a UDP 53, and this one goes on UDP 53, UDP 111, 137, and then some TCP ports, TCP 21 to 25, 81, 31, 80, 80, and um, so you can go on like so. Uh, fast mode. Um, so sorry, I said the small f was fast mode. Capital F is fast mode. Uh, scan the 100 favorite ports, not 1,000. Um, uh, Nmap randomizes the ports. Um, if you tack small r, it means go port 1, port 2, port 3 in order. Don't randomize. And Nmap randomizes to try to make it less obvious. And then you can also say like the top 50 ports, meaning the most popular 50 ports, whatever that means. You can also do the, like I said, the service interrogation. And you can interrogate to different version intensity levels from zero, hardly at all, to nine, try everything to try to interrogate what something is. Um, and you can specify some scripts, which is not for right now. You can simply do attack cap O, which means just try to fingerprint the OS if you can. 
You can set timing. So like remember how I said uh, tech cap T from zero to five. Zero is considered paranoid. Now if you do a scan with a, a timing of zero, it'll take a week literally. But if you do five, it's considered insane. And so in fact, it's so fast, it's actually, um, uh, it's actually unstable. So the default is three. And we can try timeouts and delays and different rates. And then here, the small f is do a fragment. And if you tack tack MTU, you can actually specify in uh, bytes what the fragment sizes should be. Uh, we're also going to do a decoy scan here. And um, we can specify a source IP address. You can choose the interface. Um, and then you can choose to save the output. Um, you can save it in XML format. You can save it in a script kitty format, in a greppable, meaning a searchable format. Uh, you can save it in normal format. You can save it uh, in all format. Um, so there's a bunch of choices here. Here's the, the o, small o uh, cap A, which means if you say small o cap A, my scan, it will save one of each of these except script kitty. So you'll have an XML, you'll have a greppable, and you'll have a normal. And there's a bunch of other stuff that we can do. We can IPv6 scanning. Uh, we've already talked about the TAC uh, cap A. Uh, try to do um, OS detection, version detection, some scripts, trace routes. And they give us a few examples here. So let's actually do some of these. I'm typing clear. And we're going to try some of these right now. So let me just move this over. We're just going to end map, end map, and, and we've seen how incredibly fast end map is. Uh, TAC, uh, in fact, no, no flat, or yeah, we're going to ping sweep first. So uh, TAC smallest cap P to 192.168.75.star. So let's just do a ping sweep of who's live. And actually, what's really going to happen is it's not going to be a true ping sweep anymore. Scanners used to just do ping sweeps. They don't do them anymore. Instead, they do MAC scans. They do ARP scans because those are far more li likely to respond regardless of firewall. So we can see that 75.1 with its MAC address is up, 2 is up, 8 is up, 12, 16, 131, 152, 254, 154. These are all up. Okay, so that's one of them. What's the next one? Let's do a, an NMAP scan, and that means it'll do the, the most thousand most common ports to the subnet. So let's end map, and uh, we don't have to specify anything. It'll do the a, a SYN scan to the thousand most common ports, 1 into 168.75.0 slash 24. Um, since we're logged in as root, it'll do a SYN scan. If we were logged in as a Joe Blow user, it would do a TCP connect scan. Hit enter, let it rip for just a moment, and as soon as it's done, I'm going to come back and we're going to look at the result. Okay, that was really quick. I had no sooner clicked that than it was done. So as we scroll back, it tells us about the devices it found. So it found 75.1. It found all the ports that were open. Here's its MAC address. It found 75.2. Everything's po po closed except for one uh, TCP 53. And here's its MAC address. Here's 75.8, Windows 8. These are what are open. And here's its MAC address. Here is Windows uh, Server 2012, and it has a bunch of open ports, and it has tried to identify what some of these are. And some of these it doesn't, it can't even tell what they are. Here's 16, tw uh, Server 2016, and here are the ports that are open on it. And here's 131. This is probably metasploitable. Look at how many ports are here, how many. There's loads and loads. So I encourage you to be trying this yourself and play along while I'm doing this. So now let's try, um, we can try the same thing. Uh, if we just specify the uh, smallest cap S, that means we are specifically asking for a SYN scan, as opposed to depends on how we're logged in if we don't specify. So since we are root, we're going to end up with effectively the same thing we have uh, from the previous scan. Nmap tac um, small s cap s uh, 192.168.75.0 slash 24. Hit it and it's not going to take long and I think what we'll do after this one is um, we'll try to do a uh, uh, attack O to identify the operating system. So here it is and we actually are going to have pretty much the same 
result as the previous scan um, because we effectively are asking for the same thing. Let's try attack O, capital O, for trying to fingerprint the operating system. In map, tech cap O, that's not a zero, it's an O, uh, 192.168.75.0 um, uh, slash 24. It's going to scan the, the thousand most popular ports and try to identify the operating systems as well. And it, it fingerprints the operating systems just based on, on their TCP IP, not because it actually probes the ports or queries the operating system. So it'll do its best just based on um, how the IP stack is handled by that particular host. So going back a little bit here, going back a bit, it, the hard part of course is seeing what we did. Okay, here it is. So the first one here, it found X number of ports open and it's saying OS scan results unreliable. We couldn't find at least one open and one closed port. We're just guessing. We think it's server 2008 to XP at an 86% confidence rating. Uh, and actually, I can tell you that, that that's my host and it's Windows 10. So that is its best guess. Uh, and so this is, this is what it's saying. It thinks at this confidence rating, but of course it, it was wrong because it, the, the IP stack wasn't unique enough. Okay, so if we go down to two and it's just guessing it, uh, it doesn't know, maybe it's VMware virtual NAT 99%, which actually it was. Uh, that um, 192.168.75.2 is the um, virtual default gateway of VMware. So they're correct. And it's saying, oh, and it could be XP Service Pack 3, and it could be Linux 3.2, and it could be this, and it could be that with different levels of confidence. Okay, so here's 75.8. Here's what it found, and it's saying, this is either Windows 7 2008 or 8.1, and they're right, it is 8.1. And uh, so then it says, okay, OS details, going to be one of these. Now for 12, 2012, this is what we found, and it says, this is either 2012, 7, or 8.1, and they're right. And it is 2012 R2, for, as a matter of fact. And uh, going a little bit farther, here's 16, and it says, this is Windows 2016, and they're correct. And then going a little bit farther for um, 192.168.75.131, and it says um, this one is Linux kernel 2.6, which is correct. And then 152, it's saying this is Linux kernel 3 or 4. We're not really sure. It's going to either be Linux 3 or 4, and it is Kali Linux indeed. And then this one, 254, we don't know what this one is. We think it's VM or something, and that's all we know. 154, again, we're not too sure what this thing is. So, anyway, that is that particular scanning with Nmap. Now, what else do we have here? We could do service uh, interrogation, and I think what we're going to do is we're just going to go after Metasploitable. So I'm just going to add something here just so that you have it handy. We did an Nmap TAC O and map tac o to 192.168.75.0 slash 24. Um, let's now do a tac uh, small s cap v to metasploitable, which was what, 131, I think, for me. For you, it might be something completely different. We don't need a mask here. So we're going to try this now. So let's in map. TAC S cap V 192.168.75.131. I hope that I am remembering Metasploitable's IP. I'm going to press enter. I'll know very quickly if it says no host here. Uh, so we're going to see, it. we're asking it to interrogate the services in much greater detail so that we can look for vulnerabilities. And here it is, sure enough. So on port 21, that is VSFTP D208 or later. Well, we could do a Google search for uh, vulnerabilities and for exploits against this version. And then we could see with OpenSSH if there are any vulnerabilities against it. 
If there are any vulnerabilities or in exploits against the Linux Telnet daemon, the Postfix SMTPD, uh, Apache um, ISC bind 942, Apache web server 228. Uh, how about the Samba service? How about um, and some of these others? So we can just see if there are, how about ProFTPD or um, uh, VNC? So we can just, knowing these versions, we can look for exploits. So that is Nmap smallest cap V. Now we could do a uh, connect scan. And what we can do here with the connect scan, let's actually run Wireshark. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna run Wireshark. Let me stop and let me start a Wireshark capture. I had something going from earlier. Um, let's actually watch this because the full connect scan is going to do a full three-way handshake. So let's try that. Let's do an nmap tac s uh, small s ta uh, ca uh, cap t uh, tac t three meaning going at moderate speed 192.168.75.16 now what it's going to do is it's going to try to three-way handshake the thousand most popular ports of this server going at a moderate speed press enter and um Okay, so it has found that they're all in an open state, meaning they're open for business. Let's open Wireshark and let's stop Wireshark and let's just examine what Wireshark discovered. And let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Oh, not that way. Let's zoom our view. See if we can zoom in a little bit here so that we can just look at these a little bit more. What is this control plus plus? Let me just do that. Control plus plus. I'm just zooming a little bit here so that we can look at these packets and so we can see let's let's just scroll up a lot higher here to see where it starts. Okay so you can see that it's sending let me just expand this so um, actually what we want is we're, we're going from Kali, in this case 154, going to 16, and it's starting with a, a, a SYN to port 199, and then a SYN to port 139, and a SYN to port 8080, a SYN to 443, 135, 22. You see how it's randomizing those. And um, what we can do is we expect that um, it is open for business on 135, so we could... Um, we can we can see that one there and we can scroll down here and we can start to see some resets and so and we can also see this so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, filter a little bit here so we can just follow one of these now if it actually had a connection and it did something we could right click and we could follow the tcp stream so and it would show us if there was anything but the cool thing about following the TCP stream is, even if you don't see anything in this window, just just dismiss the window because it'll just show the three pack or the, the packets that were relevant. So you can see here in just picking one of them and following the stream, I had a SYN and that was from Kali port 52948 to server 2016 port 135. I then had a SYNAC coming back, and then I had an ACK. And then I, uh, Kali sends a reset. So, um, so we have a, a SYN from 52.948 to 135, a SYNAC from 135 coming back to 54 or 52.948, and then an ACK. So there's the TCP three-way handshake. And if you open these up, you can actually see in the flags, I'm, I've clicked the first one and I've expanded the flags. You can see the SYN flag raised right there. And then when you pick the SYN ACK, you can see SYN and ACK both raised. And when you pick the ACK flag, there's the ACK. And then the reset ACK, this is um, uh, Nmap saying, okay, I'm done. <laughs> we just barely did the handshake and it's saying, I'm done. So it's basically saying acknowledge and reset. It's a polite way of closing up. So we can see the TCP handshake right there. 
So that is doing a full connect scan. So now let's do a Christmas scan and let's again um, run Wireshark and see what a Christmas scan looks like. So I'm going to come to Wireshark in Kali and I'm going to start it again and I'm going to continue without saving and I'm going to minimize Wireshark and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to uh, end map and uh, what I want to do is I want to do a small s cap x to server 2016. Small s cap x to 192.168.75.16 and I'm just going to let it go. So it's going to do uh, the thousand top ones. Now a Christmas scan is kind of weird. With a Christmas scan um, you will get your response will be a reset because you're trying to do these weird things so the ports are just saying ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, reset. Um, but the very fact that you got a response at all means yeah <laughs> they're, that host is live. So it's a way sometimes of sneaking past a firewall or an IDS to find out if a host is live and to find out more. Um, now um, different versions of OS's respond differently to Christmas scans. So let me go to Wireshark and let me just well, first of all, I have an old filter here that I am going to come over and I'm going to get rid of this filter. See this little red X and click this little red X and I'm going to stop the capture. And I can see that I have the fin push urgents. These are the different Christmas scans and you can see they're all coming fi from 50546. That is Kali's source port. But look, it went to 3389 and 993 and 1025 and 21, etc. And I can just pick one of these. When I, I pick one, you can see that fin, push, and urgent are all set. And you can even see them right here. Now that's an illog illogical combination. You don't say urgent and push and also I'm done, finish. I mean, you, you just don't do that. So um, anyway, so we have this fin, push, urge. Now what we can do is we can right click one of these, like I said, and follow the TCP stream. And even though it doesn't actually have a conversation for us to see, it's okay because we can see the two packets that were involved. So here's me sending a fin push urge and here's the server coming back saying, what? Reset. That reset shows up in um, Nmap as port closed. So that is um, the results of the Nmap scan there, or the rather the Christmas scan. Now let's see if it's any different if we uh, drop the or if we bring up a firewall. So server 2016 has a dropped firewall at the moment. The firewall is off. I am on server 2016 now and I'm going to bring the firewall up for just a moment and we're going to try that scan again and see if it responds any differently. So let me just come over here to the control panel in server 2016. Uh, I always hate category view. I'm going to change my view to large icons. I'm going to come down here to Windows Firewall. I'm going to click Windows Firewall and I'm going to bring the firewall up. Turn Windows Firewall on or off and I'm just going to turn it on for right now. I'm going to drop it again in just a moment. I'm going to turn it on for right now and I'm going to try the scan again and I'm going to run Wireshark again. So I'm back to Wireshark. Let me clear my little filter here. Clear that. And let me start Wireshark again, continue without saving. And so Wireshark is running because I, I click the little blue fin, it's running. Give it just a moment, okay. And now let me just up arrow and I want to run that scan again with this time with the firewall. Now last time it showed that the ports were all closed. In other words, I got a reset on all of them because it was saying, what is that weird combination? Reset. Every single port did that. Now with the firewall raised, let's see if the firewall allows a response or not. And again, it kind of depends upon the OS. So now this is interesting. Notice how it says the ports are open filtered. So that's very different. And let's see how that's possible. Let's go to Wireshark and let's stop the capture. And let's try to find those fin push urge and we don't frankly care really what it is. Um, we can find something nice or whatever. It doesn't really matter to us. Just pick one of these and what we'll do is we'll just we'll just take one 
I suppose it doesn't matter at all. And we'll right click and we'll follow the stream. We just want to know how the thing responded. So here's the interesting part. No response as opposed to a reset. When you get no response whatsoever, assuming that you have connectivity, that's a firewall because you should at least get a reset. So that is interesting. So let us clear that. So we know for sure either way that the host is live. And in this way, we know that there's a firewall that is disallowing any kind of response, which is not normal, actually. It's actually not normal. Okay, we're going to drop the firewall again. And um, I'm going to go back to server 2016. So the firewall did what it was supposed to do. It disallowed any kind of response whatsoever. There have been some firewalls, however, that have allowed some kind of response. Uh, so in our case, uh, when you see no response, that and, and we know that that host is live and that we can reach it, that's not normal to get nothing. So we know there's a firewall there. And in this case, the Christmas scan did not get past that firewall, but we did see how it responded um, when there was no firewall. All right, so let's continue on. I'm just going to drop, or I'm going to just minimize Wireshark here. What else do we have? We are going to try, um, we're going to try that sort of multi-interrogation uh, in verbose mode against two machines, 8 and 16. So let's try this. Let's nmap tac um, smallest cap a tac verbose small v. If you did vv, it'd be very verbose. Go a little bit faster, not quite insane, but a little bit faster, and see what we can get. Because remember, it will scan, it'll fingerprint, it'll interrogate, it'll run a few um, vulnerability scripts against it, and it'll even trace route. So 75.16 uh, and 8. Hit it. And so we can see that uh, it has done this. And so taking a look here at 75.16, so all 1,000 ports unfiltered. So it means that um, uh, there's no firewall there. OK. And so that's what we got off of 16. Anything? Did we get anything else off of 8? And if we look here, 8. We better go up just a little bit here. So we're doing an ARP ping scan, found two hosts. OK, and parallel DNS resolution. We did an ACK scan against two hosts here. We completed the ACK scan. And um, let's see. So we see that uh, with the ACK scan, this host is up. And scanned all 1,000 ports. They're unfiltered. Found the MAC address. So read data files from user bin, share, and map. So what we could do is um, go take a look, actually. OK, so now this next one, we're going to run an ACK scan. And you know what? Let's make it very verbose. So let's run an ACK scan against, and run it faster, against 2016 and 8. So let's nmap tac small s cap a tac vv very verbose tac t4 against two machines 192.168.75.16,8. And let's go over to Wireshark and let's start a new capture with Wireshark here. So let's start Wireshark, continue without saving. And uh, let's let Wireshark capture this so we can see the ACK scans. And let's minimize this. And let's let it run. So it is doing fast ACK scans. You can see it says initiating ACK scan, scanning two hosts right here. Initiating parallel DNS resolution of the hosts. Completed the ACK scan. You see it was really, really quick. And so scan report, the host is up. And all 1,000 ports are unfiltered because there were 1,000 resets. And with this one, uh, let's see, where's the result for 8? Here it is. Um, it is up. All 1,000 are unfiltered because 1,000 resets. So let's stop Wireshark and let's actually 
capture this. So we're looking for Axe scans now. So I'm going to scroll up a bit here, and I can see Axe with resets. We can pick any one of these, any Axe scan sent, and you can see that it is um, from Kali 154 to server 2016. Kali just had a port 38502 to server 2016's 5678 with the ACK flag raised. And if I right click this one and I follow the TCP stream and I can discard, this window would be as, would be if there was any text to read, like we were reading someone's email or someone's telnet session, but there's no text. So I can see the two packets that are involved. So from Kali to 16 and 16 back to Kali, if I expand this a little bit, you can see that. You can see the mirror image of the two ports. You can see in the ACK scan, the ACK flag is raised without the three-way handshake, just an ACK. It's like, hi, we're in the middle of this conversation. Here's my TCP ACK. And of course, server 2016 is going, huh, we're not in a conversation reset. And so that's what that looks like. And that is why we see uh, unfiltered because of a thousand resets. That's the ACK flag saying, <laughs> These ports are not um, firewalled. Whether they're open for business is a whole other matter, but there's no firewall in the way. So we know that much right, right off the bat. We could also, instead of just a, a smallest cap A, which is a, a, an ACK flag or an ACK scan, we could just do uh, something without that small S and just do sort of like that all interrogation thing that we were, I was talking about earlier. Um, so let's do this just, just the, the cap A. And the cap A is not an ACK flag. It's that um, scan, vulnerability scripts, um, fingerprinting, interrogating, trace routing. It's trying to do several things at once. So let's try that. I'm just going to up arrow. And I'm going to get rid of the very verbose so we don't have quite so much output. And it's going to be just a, a cap A against those two hosts. Hit enter. And it's just going to try a bunch of things, including a few vulnerability scripts. And it's going to try the scanning. It's going to try a trace route. So I'm going to pause the video for a moment, and I'm going to come back as soon as it's ready. OK, we have some results. Let's scroll back. Back, back, back. See what we can find. OK, here it is. So it started with 8, Windows 8, found the open ports, found its MAC address, found that it was either Windows 7 2008 or 8.1, that is correct. It um, found that in any of these cases, um, if it was 7, it was SP0 or SP1. If it was 2008, it was SP1 or 2008 R2 or Windows 8 or 8.1 update 1. It's only one hop away, meaning there's really no router at all in between. And it uh, found some different things by running different scripts. Found out its clock uh, skew. It found out um, its NetBIOS name, Windows 8. And it found out um, doing running a, a script called SMB OS Discovery. It found out that it was indeed Windows 8 Enterprise and um, found out its computer name and found out its NetBIOS computer name and its work group and the system time on it and found out about uh, any SMB security and it supports challenge response and user level authentication, no message signing uh, with SMB version 2. Uh, message, uh, message signing is enabled, not required. There's an SMB 2 time did the one hop trace route. So it found some stuff. Then it did the same thing for server 2016 and it found that it has these ports open and it has identified the various ports and what they are, IIS and um, MSRPC. And uh, then it um, couldn't fingerprint the operating system exactly, uh, this particular switch. Uh, other switches did fingerprint it. This one did not. It actually has a um, these TCP IP fingerprints and says, hey, if you can identify this, please let us know. Well, the TAC CAPO already found that, um, but this CAP A did not. 
And so it has some various host results here. And it's only one hop away, meaning there's no router. It's on the same subnet. And so it says, OK, so we've done it. And so that is running the uh, cap A. So now let me just move this over and see what else we have to look at. We could do a UDP scan here. Why don't we do a UDP scan? And let's just see what we have. And um, so we're going to go real fast against Metasploitable. And this small s uh, cap U, we could UDP scan. We could say attack P for the ports. Um, let's do a UDP scan against port 53, 137. Um, 53.111, I'm just thinking of ports that Linux would listen, listen on. 137 because of the Samba service, 138, 139, let's just try some of those. Uh, so we're just going to do a UDP scan of against these ports only right here. Um, in fact, we can even take no space there. And we'll do it insanely fast against Metasploitable. We'll have to actually type in Metasploitable's IP. So let's do an nmap of a tax small s cap u this is a udp scan the ports will be fifth with no space 53 comma 111 comma um, 137 comma 138 comma 139 and we need to put in metasploitables ip and uh, in case we're not sure um, i seem to remember metasploitable in my case is 192168 um, uh, what is it 75.131 if you do not know your Metasploitable IP, come over to the Metasploitable VM. Find the Metasploitable VM. It's going to be the, one of these little tiny ones right here. Click your mouse in. My mouse has disappeared. Press Enter. And log in as msfadmin. Enter. And the password is also msfadmin. But as I type it, you won't see it. msfadmin. Enter. And Assuming that I did not mistype it, let me try it again. MSFADMIN, enter. Password, MSFADMIN. Hope I didn't fat finger it. There it is. IF config, if config, press enter. It is indeed 131. There's no mouse. So um, Control Alt to release my mouse. There it is. Ethernet 0, 192.168.75.131. Okay, so I've got that right already. Let me just, now I'm interested in, in running Wireshark, so let me just come over to Wireshark. Let me discard my filter. Let me start a new Wireshark capture. Click the little blue fin, continue without saving. Uh, and um, I want to actually watch the results of UDP scan. Press Enter. So um, it went and did the UDP scan really quick, and it saw that 53, the DNS server, and uh, the RPC endpoint mapper, 111, and um, the, uh, this is what, NetBIOS name resolution server, and um, so they're all open. Couldn't tell whether or not this was open, um, because when you get that open slash filtered, it means, I don't know. Closed means it got, uh, it, it, something, somehow it, it could tell it was not open, but there was no firewall as well. So if we go back to Wireshark, click that. Let's stop the capture here. And let's just scroll up and let's look for some UDPs. And so we should be able to see some UDPs right here. There's some UDPs right here. So this is us scanning port 139. Now there's no follow the TCP stream in UDP, OK? There's no, there's no handshake in UDP. So I'm just going to select this one. And I can see that it is UDP from a Kali port to the server, or no, the Metasploitable port. And so that is UDP there. And because uh, there's no, like, there are no flags in UDP. There's no SYN, SYNAC, ACK, no FIN flag or anything. It's just like, send a packet and maybe the service will respond, maybe it won't, don't know. And so um, what we can do is we can click Protocol and which means that we'll sort just by the UDPs and see if we get any love whatsoever. So, okay. So we have, um, we have uh, well, we have other traffic as well. So we have done a UDP scan. And by the way, you can do a TCP scan too. So I'm just going to add this here just so you guys can see it. Um, against Metasploitable, just so we have it. 
The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to in map and no, put it in front of this one. We're going to in map uh, tack um, uh, P meaning and if you don't specify UDP, it means it's going to be TCP tack P80. So I'm just going to do a port 80 scan against the subnet 192.168.75. Dot o slash 24. That's it. And uh, so this means um, I'm just going to send port 80. I'm going to pack it to TCP 80 only. So let's end map tack P 80, no space. I and mean, you can put a space there, but I think the syntax is to not put a space in. 192.168.75.0 slash 24. Hit it. So it's only going to see who's open on 80. That's it. So to look to see who's up, but it's not doing any port scanning except for 80. So we can see that on um, 75.1, 80 is open. It's open for business. On 75.2, nope, 80 is closed. It's sent to reset. 75.8, 80 is closed. So Windows 8 is not listening on port 80. On 75.12, it's open. So server 2012 has a web server, web server of some kind. Uh, 75.16, it's open. So server 2016 has a web server running. 131 has a web server running. 152, which is I think the Ubuntu, has does, has a web server running. There it is. Um, and uh, let's see, 254, um, filtered, can't tell what it is. 154, host is up, Don't uh, and no web server. So that is just going for a particular port. Now, this next one is we can do a fragment. And as a matter of fact, these two are actually, I think, the same thing. Oh, no, I think the small f is 16-byte, uh, whereas the if we say MTU, that's 8-byte. We're just going to do one of these. So um, we're going to do uh, a fragment where fragments can sometimes sneak by firewalls and IDSs because they're so tiny. So let's do an Nmap port scan. Uh, and what what will happen and we're only going to do just a few ports. Um, what will happen is, so let me just start a new Wireshark capture. What will happen is we're going to see lots of fragments um, if this thing is, if the packet is initially big enough. So let's end map, although for just doing a SYN scan, the fragment, well, let's take a look. Let's do fragment for port 80 um, just for uh, Metasploitable. 192.168.75.131. And let's just see that only. Of course, done quickly. Port 80 is open. Let's go to Wireshark and let's stop the capture. And let's go take a look. And when we look here, so we can see that we actually just have a sin sin hack hack. It's so tiny that it doesn't matter. The, um, this initial handshake was so small. Now, where, where this fragmentation would be meaningful, I mean, this is so tiny here that um, it was just a handshake. But where it would be meaningful is if we were sending whole files, malicious commands, and we wanted to break them up so it was not obvious, so they would come in small pieces. That's where that fragment flag would be useful. OK, um, so uh, anyway, here uh, we've got. Um, we, we've done that one. Now let's see what else do we have. Let's, uh, oh, this one will be fun. Let's send some decoys. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to send a decoy to, we're going to be scanning with decoys to the server 2016 IP address. So let's start a new Wireshark capture. And let's continue without saving. Let's minimize Wireshark. And let us in map tack cat d r n d r n d 10 and server 2016 192.168.75.16 hit it so in the midst of all the decoy noise the actual scans will also be happening and so what we're going to do is we're going to let the scan run for a moment then we're going to come and take a look at the decoys okay so the scan did happen but let's go and look at wireshark to see what happened behind the scenes. 
So let's open Wireshark and let's stop here. So now the fun part about the decoys is that they're totally fake. <laughs> it's just meant to confuse. Look at this. So some of these are, I mean, you can see the ones that are, um, well, I don't have a legitimate one showing here yet, but you can, oh, here they are. Well, so here is um, these fakes, like 178.234.49.139 trying to do a SYN scan to 75.16. There's no 178.234. What about 192.120 or 47.12? These are all phony addresses just meant to confuse the IDS, the admin. And in the meantime here, so this is all just noise to confuse the, um, the firewall, the admin, the IDS. And it's all just meant to just sort of make, make noise here. So what we can do is we can sort the sources. Let's click the source column, click source. And we're just sorting them. So we can see the, the real scans from 75.154, because we've sorted them. So we can see the real scans. But then if we scroll, we can see a whole bunch of bogus scans from 137.94.80.133. And we scroll some more. 130.137.66.82. So we've done some decoy scanning just to generate noise. Those things don't exist. And in the meantime, the um, uh, the poor target might be trying to respond to those decoys. And um, it's all just to create confusion. So have we, have we've pretty much covered all of Nmap. I recommend that you play with Nmap and actually do an internet search for some popular Nmap commands. Uh, and just get comfortable with Nmap because if anything, you're going to need to know the syntax for and the common examples like we what we just saw for this particular tool. So that is Nmap.